Hi, I'm Kent. In this video, I'm going to cast a new silicon part. That I'm going to use to make a new plaster part. And that plaster part is actually going to be part of a new mold. In a recent video, I showed making a plaster mold using silicone molds. In particular, I showed making this mold using these silicone molds. This was actually when I very first started pottery and I was playing around with silicon and different processes. And it was actually before I started YouTube. So I didn't show how this was made. In this video, I'm going to cast a new silicone part. All right, so let's work backwards. We want a pot and I've been slip casting these pots. Here's one that's been bisque fired already. Before that, we have bone dry and this one's actually leather hard. So I cast this one yesterday. So how do we slip cast these? Well, I use plaster molds. So I take liquid slip and I pour it into the mold let it sit for a while, pop it out, and this is the result after it's dried for a while. However, where do these molds come from? Well, I've been making mine. I have a few videos on this, and that's what I want to revisit here. Recently, I showed a video of actually making this particular mold. I used these here. These are two different pieces of silicone that I made. To make these, I used some 3D printed parts. So I used this one, this one, and a few more that I don't have. So I needed a 3D part for the outside and inside of this mold, and the outside and inside of this mold. Most of these surfaces are pretty forgiving. The only one that actually matters is the surface here, which winds up being the surface of my finished pot. This one here goes into the plaster, and this plaster here winds up in the finished pot. In particular, it's this pot here. So you can see this came out of this mold, and it's shrunk a little bit since this clay has been drying. So in this video, I want to go ahead and make some new silicone molds. I'm not going to use this one again. I want to make a different one. So I've been using my 3D printer to make my molds. In a future video, assuming this works out, I will show you how I made this. It's actually part of a bigger mold. This is actually the bottom piece. So this here is the outside shell and it clips together. And then this here is the inside shell that goes in. And there's a small gap that you can't really see on camera between these two. That's where the silicone is going to go. I'm going to pour the silicone into here to create a very thin wall piece of silicone. That will then be supported by this 3D printed piece. And the shape I'm trying to get is actually this here. This is actually the foot of the pot. This is the smallest piece and it was the first one to get printed. I'm going to go ahead and mix up a batch of silicone. I want to make sure it plays nicely with this filament that I used. And I want to test out this overall process. The previous molds I showed you were one outside piece and one inside piece and they were very thin. This one I've made much more sturdy on purpose. And it's actually a multi-part mold. What I'm going to do next is go ahead and tape my mold closed so it doesn't leak. And then mix up a batch of silicone to get it down in these tiny holes. So these two pieces here go together and interlock. I put some tabs here on the outside so they register. And then there's a groove on the inside of this piece that fits over here. So I'm going to use some of my favorite tape here, this foil tape, and tape all the seams closed. That way we don't get silicone leaking everywhere. All right, I pulled up my silicone. It's a 30 durometer silicone, so it should be relatively flexible when it's done. And this one I can mix one to one by volume. So I went and looked into the 3D model and the space left between these two molds, which is the place where I want silicone, is about 93 milliliters. This silicone here is mixed by volume, so I need to measure out equal parts of both A and B. And I've got some mixing cups here. Let's go ahead and fill it up to 70 so that I have plenty of extra. So while I'm mixing this up, there's a few things that I don't have. So normally when you're mixing silicone, you want a vacuum chamber to be able to pull all the bubbles out. I don't have one of those. And usually when you cast the parts, you also want a pressure chamber to be able to squeeze all the bubbles in the part out. I also don't have one of those. So we're going to make do and hope that the bubbles that I get are relatively benign. All right, so this is the initial mix. So let's go ahead and pour it into a clean container. This has some undercuts in it, so I'm going to try and jiggle it around a little bit once I'm done to see if I can release the bubbles. I'm just going to pour it in nice and slow. It 
starting to see some creep up the sides here. I was worried these grooves I made in the side would be too small, but they actually seem to be just about the right size. All right, I think you can probably see that on camera as well. It's creeped up to the other edges here. So I think that means I'm cool. I'm going to tap this around a little bit. All right, we'll call that good. So this says it will set in four to six hours, which for me means overnight. Let's come back to this when it is all cured. This has set overnight and it looks like we have silicone now. The witness cup is looking good. And there's a little disc of silicone left on the bottom. It looks good. I don't see any obvious bubbles in that. So that's a good sign. All right, let's see if I can demold this piece here. First up will be to remove the tape. It looks like it's a good thing I taped it up. I did get a little bit of leakage out here. Now for the tricky part, see if I can get it apart. All right, this is a little bit stuck. Let me wrestle with it a bit off camera and we'll come back to it. All right, it is definitely in there pretty tight. So I went ahead and broke the inner mold. This is the top ring. It's a little unfortunate because this is a piece that took longer to print since it is the one that creates the surface of the plaster. However, I don't think I'll need to remake the silicone and the support I need is actually the orange piece, not the gray piece. So if I'm gonna break one, this is the right one to break. And now that the top's off, I think it's not locked together anymore. So I should be able to separate this orange piece here and just peel it off. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. So this is the outside of the mold. This will be used to support. And definitely got some more leakage in here. Make sure the top is all released. All right, cool. Got the orange piece out. So this will eventually go back together and the silicone will be housed in there. So now I should be able to just peel this off with the gray piece here. Perfect. And there we have it. We have the new silicone piece. One of the things I did differently than other silicone molds that I've seen is that these walls are very, very thin. And they're even much thinner than the last ones. These are uh, half a centimeter, so five millimeters. If I poured plaster in here, it'd be very easy to deform and I'd wind up with the wrong shape. That's where this piece comes in. So I want to keep this for when I pour plaster. I should be able to slide this in. And now this piece here should be relatively rigid. So as I pour the plaster in, it won't get deformed. And then the plan will be to pop off these 3D printed parts, slide this guy back out and then be able to peel the silicone off of the plaster. That's the theory. Let's see if it works. Let's go ahead and mix up a batch of plaster and try it out. I have my newly created silicone mold inside of its 3D printed housing, and I rubber banded the 3D printed piece together. My 3D model says this is about 230 milliliters. So I went ahead and measured up the right amount of plaster and water. Next, I will dump the plaster into the water to let it slake and then mix it up and we'll pour it in. All right, that's all in. We'll go ahead and let it set up and then we'll demold it in a few minutes. This is set. It's still a bit warm and moist. And from what I've read, that's the right time to go ahead and demold things. We'll see if my composite mold here does its trick. First thing will be to remove the rubber band and the 3D printed piece, and then hopefully we can just peel out the plaster. Oh, perfect, that came out. Oh, awesome, I'll just slid right out. Get a little bit of flash here on the top. This should come out very easily, and it indeed does. Wow, that is awesome. There is my piece. So 
So this is the critical surface. This is actually going to be a bottom of a multi-piece mold. These little nubs here will register for the sides. The rest of my mold pieces are still printing right now, so when those are all done, I'll do a video on the new mold that I'm making. But I am very impressed with that. That came out very nicely. Got a few small pinholes here. My plaster was a little bit thicker than expected, so I might have screwed that up a little bit. While this is wet, I'm going to go ahead and clean it up. All right, there we go. From 3D printed parts to new silicone mold to plaster mold. So I just did some quick math and I used about $5 of silicone in making this mold. You can imagine how much it would cost if I didn't use a 3D printed support and did it in a more traditional way. I'd made several attempts of trying to do this directly with just 3D printing and they kind of sort of work. You have to be pretty patient and often the 3D printed mold gets destroyed in the process. And while I don't have a need to make dozens of molds, over the past year or so, I've realized that actually having multiple copies can be useful. One is sometimes my molds don't always come out perfect. So here I've got some little pinholes. I think in this particular mold, they're not in a place where it's critical. But if my plaster for some reason didn't cast properly, I'd want to be able to reuse my mold. By using the 3D printing process directly with the plaster, and if the mold failed in demolding, I'd have to 3D print it again. That's not a huge deal, but it's kind of annoying. It takes a lot of time. This mold did fail when I was removing the silicone from it. However, I don't think I'll need to recast the silicone piece. Hopefully this will be durable enough that I can make as many plaster parts as I want. You know, I should be able to make 10 or 20 out of the same silicone. And if I wanted to, I could potentially glue this back together or just print it again. This one here, I think was about 16 or 18 hours of printing. I put it on the fine setting since this is the face that winds up being the plaster piece. These two here are exact copies of each other. So be on the lookout for a future video where I'm going to show the full mold. But hopefully this process here is informative. If you have any questions or comments or any suggestions, let me know down below in the comment section. Thanks.